Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And today, we actually have quite a lot of stuff to talk about, but I noticed that a lot of you guys are not getting the notification for these videos. So guys, make sure you check if you have the notification bell on or not, because you got to remember, what if all of a sudden the Ripple v SEC lawsuit is over? I make a video or do a live stream and you're not going to get a notification? Big problem, right? So make sure you press that notification bell on and let's dive right into the video as we have quite a lot to talk about. All right. So having said that, what do we have to talk about today? A significant amount, a whole a whole bunch of stuff, really. It's actually pretty crazy. So first of all, my expectation that I portrayed a little bit earlier in this video, which is the reason I called it urgent, was quite right. Because in that video, I told you all, the S&P is moving on a very interesting course, it's going down, and there's a very high probability that because of what happened over the last two days, that Bitcoin is gonna show some inverse correlation signs. And when we look back, it's been pretty obvious that Bitcoin broke out towards the upside, and right now, as of this point, is still showing an inverse correlation to the S&P. Where again, the S&P from the moment in which it opened has basically fallen down, let's say about, um, 2%, let's call it, and Bitcoin ever since the point it opened, let's see, at about 6, I believe it is, or 6.30, okay, 6.30, let's see, from the point it opened, it has, at the maximum, let's call it, gone about 1.7% on the upside, so a little inverse correlation, again, yeah, I think that's quite, that's right about valid, I would say, and that's again what we already expected a little bit, so I just quickly wanted to make sure that you guys understood why I called that urgent because, again, this video was made at 6.25 or so whilst it was all happening and I put my expectations out there. Then again, guys, as of this point, again, I'm using Bybit, a link for that is down below right there. I'm using that right now still as of this point uh, to actually have a short position open and that's because even though it is showing some signs of an inverse correlation, it doesn't have to stay that way, nor will I go against my own judgment which was basically that we're gonna open up a short position as a hedge and the long only when it's confirmed that we are being bullish. Right now it's inverse, which is fun to see, fun to watch and to analyze, but really not a critical factor just quite yet. We're only gonna start going bullish on Bitcoin again once we're above 38 point some thousand, but we'll get into that once we get back there. All right, so I'm gonna go uh, through the news, I guess, in more of a rapid pace as we have a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of stuff to talk about. And Want to quickly, for last sake, say if you did not open a short position at our predefined spot at about thirty-eight point seven or so thousand dollars, no worries. But again, make sure you take a close eye on the videos that I make over here because you could have had a short open, which right now would have been about one hundred percent profit on our trade. Not financial advice, but still juicy stuff. All right. So first of all, the U.S. Federal Reserve is making some analysts. <laughs> bullish on Bitcoin again. Recent US economic data could spoil the Fed's hawkish plans for 2022. There's a couple of things which I saw come out today. I saw that the EU is not going to go for inflation numbers. Oh, sorry, guys. It's not going to increase their interest rates, which is interesting. I'm not exactly sure what their idea behind that is. We can definitely understand one reason why they would not do it. Um, that reason being the more you're going to decrease, sorry, guys, the more you're going to increase your interest rate, the more the economy staggers, and so you definitely don't want to do that. The only problem is the price is going to keep going higher, and the economy looks to keep going better, even though that's not the case. Um, and I guess let's just keep it at that for a little second. So here it says, in detail, Bitcoin's last drop below 33000 met with a healthy buying sentiment, as again, everybody wanted to get that little bottom. Meanwhile, the US dollar index, which measures the green backs of strength against the basket of top foreign currencies, rose 97.441 last Friday logging its best level since July of 2020. However, the index corrected by nearly 1.5% to over 96 by February 3rd. And again, what they're saying is signs of a steady Bitcoin price recovery emerged earlier this week as investors shifted away from the US dollar on weaker than expected economic data. Well, I guess a couple of things are to be said for that, right? Apparently, US factory activity, employment drops. And there's actually a full story I can make about that, but I kind of want to stay a little bit more to the point here, as we can really talk a lot about interest rates, inflation rates, and employment and whatnot. Let's keep it to a minimum for this video and focus more on the crypto-related stuff directly. Uh, only what I quickly want to say is that the Fed officially now cautiously hawkish. One of the primary catalysts behind the Fed's re uh, rate hike 
plans was a steady recovery in the U.S. jobs market, but with less than expected ADP readings, the central bank could backtrack on its tightening plans. And again, that could have some very interesting effects on Bitcoin. Let's keep it at that for right now, right, guys? Let's keep it at that. So there was a story earlier today, which I shared with you all. And I want you to quickly notice he is, first of all, getting a lot of followers really quickly because he's a genius and a hero in the crypto space. Uh, what this man basically did is he went against the verdict of the IRS, where they basically wanted to tax him for holdings that he got from staking, even though he did not make profit in those necessarily. And so he got his money from the taxes back and they basically made a settlement right now. And the point being, a lot of people took this as regulatory clarity when in reality it's just a specific settlement. So understand that this is not the, the end of things just quite. It's going to be a long and fierce battle, but it will most likely only play out in a couple of months from here, a couple of years from here, if nothing new pops up, basically. Then again, he could also take the settlement and then we'd not get any clarity whatsoever. So that's a really interesting point. And also, guys, it was a really crazy day for stocks. Uh, even yesterday already was really interesting. Apparently, PayPal stock down 25%, Facebook stock down 30%. It was a crazy day. Then again, if you watched Facebook stock, it repumped um, like 30% within the last couple of hours as well, which is rather interesting. And then, just in, Russia's Minister of Finance proposes letting banks sell crypto. Crypto should be treated as investments in gold and other assets, the minister wrote in a letter to the prime minister. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, we actually knew the majority of what Russia has said about crypto online. We, we, we've covered that, but they're really going heavily into it all of a sudden, allowing banks to sell it. What? That's a radical shift, you would think. And then this is what I shared over on my Twitter because I not or I did not get personally involved into this, but almost. And it's something which I really think hits quite close to home because I've been so busy with using DeFi the last couple of months that I'm thinking, ooh, really, what if the what if the money that I have locked up eventually is going to kind of screw me in the butt as well? In second largest DeFi hack ever, Blockchain Bridge loses $320 million worth of Ether. The network has over $1 billion in total value locked and supports six blockchains, Terra, Solana, Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, and Polygon. And as far as we can tell now, only WETH has been affected. No other tokens, a wormhole admin wrote on Telegram. The protocol offered the hacker a bounty of $10 million for detail on the exploit and return of the stolen wrapped Ether. And as of this point, we have not seen a reply just quite yet, but that is scary. Now, last month, Oh no, last week actually, okay, it's officially last month. The exploit comes after hackers made off with 80 million from decentralized finance protocol Qubit Finance last week. And so this is a very heavy hit for the crypto space, but it's being taken partially out of proportion in the sense that we don't know just quite yet whether or not they'll be able to give it back or whether or not they do that. I personally think it's very nice to see the number of 200 or 300 million and think, wow, let me keep that. Let me, you know, I, I did a good hack, wow. But I think a lot of these guys, these hackers should also see from the other side, as long as the bounty is relative. And I always said, they should always give at least 1% of whatever was stolen, but try to get that towards 10% of the money stolen. Because even though you might say, well, but more hackers are going to try. I would say, let them try as much as possible. As long as these are white hat hackers that are trying it for the incentive of the reward, you're in a really good position. The majority of people who start the task are going into it malicious intent or non-malicious intent. They don't change up halfway thinking, I could just keep this money. That, I don't think that's really how it works because the majority of these guys have thought out the different ways in which they could launder or this, that, this, that. They thought out most likely before they attempted the job. So if they take it, so to speak, there's a very high probability that they will actually give it back to you for the green dollars, you know, the, the official, just um, official money rather than all this washing and under... Layer, unless we're talking about a multi-billion dollar hack. As I've said before, guys, if somebody hacks a billion dollars, there's a very small chance they're going to give it back. Um, but I think that's like the, the threshold as well. Above a billion, bounties won't really work that properly unless you're really given once more a hundred million dollars to somebody who's stolen that. Um, because generally speaking, if they've stolen the billion, whatever you do in your entire system to blacklist them, they'll get away with it in some weird way, shape, or form. At least those are my thoughts. Not financial advice, not legal advice. Please don't do this. Don't hold me accountable. Um... But with a $300 million hack, I think a lot of people are going to be happy to actually claim $30 million in official just like that in their in their bank account, you know, deposit it. It's only because right now the proportions are just so bad that for some people it's not worth it to give it back, you know. 
let's say they pay a freaking company 25 25 million dollars to launder all this stuff basically you know the 10 million dollar bounty is good because it's not a, a like a, a 1 million like we've seen other companies do where it's like uh, why would you do that uh, but still it's pretty low for the number which i think they should be given away which i think is again 10 percent purely because it's such a big issue if they don't give it back that you're going to put everything on everything um, again don't negotiate with never mind let's actually not go too deep into that before i block myself over on youtube <laughs> Ooh, thinking about that right now while saying it then again it is pretty scary because uh, i've been getting heavily into DeFi, guys you already know it most likely for my videos i'm creating a video for patreon today about DeFi. i think yeah good one coming up all right so that was happening can't really say anything good about it by the way not exactly sure what to say uh, a couple hours ago by the way okay so this was earlier in the morning i covered this and then later Another update to the wormhole exploit. No more activity from exploiter's ETH address. Stated all funds were restored. Unclear from where. And Porto is running again. Oh, team is working on the incident report. The vulnerability has been patched. We are working to get the network back up as soon as possible. Okay, so the vulnerability is gone. Mm. Ooh, let's not cover that. Hopefully you didn't see. <laughs> uh, let's see if they actually got the money back. Oh, all funds have been restored and the wormhole is back up. We're deeply grateful for your support and thank you for your patience. Huh. Uh. Okay, let's quickly, because uh, I'm a little bit confused actually. It says here, contract was exploited for 120,000 ETH. Yeah, vulnerability was patched, okay. ETH contract has been filled and all the W ETH are backed one by one. The portal token bridge is back up. Mm hmm. So, what I'm guessing, what they've done here, is there's a couple of different options. So, hmm, but, but let's quickly read first. So, this guy says, please don't act as if you got the money back, the 80,000. ETH or 250 million, which again is a different number than the 120,000 ETH. Berg says where they claim that. He says, the funds are restored. Would be more accurate to say funds have been replenished. They didn't restore the original ETH, they replenished with new ETH. Same thing that would happen at a bank if it was robbed, partially true. Very seldom do they ever recover and return the original funds stolen. Okay, so as far as I understand, there, there there's actually a couple of different options, but the one I think they went for is to say, Hey, our W ETH, all the W ETH that we had, okay, there's, no, there's so many different options, actually. Let's cover one of them. The W ETH we had in our platform was also backed by actual ETH. And so let's say our, our platform here had 120,000 W ETH in here. We also had 120,000 real ETH to back it up. Potentially, right? Potentially, potentially, potentially. And so we basically just send that ETH now back in and wrapped it, so to speak. Uh... Yeah, but there's a couple of things which don't line up. Maybe they just got the funds from somewhere else. It doesn't matter. But I guess people didn't lose their money, so that's good, I guess. Uh, then again, it's kind of confusing, you know? So much money. How? Huh. Very interesting, this one. Very interesting hack. Very confusing from a certain perspective. So let's see here. How can a company protocol return 320 million and still survive? And let's quickly see. So one of the guys said, Yes, they learned that crypto doesn't know who jump trading is. Jump is the top five of the biggest, most well capitalized trading firms in the world. They easily have 40 people dedicated to crypto. Last year, they started funding incubated projects. Bill Bam, please. The Wormhole Crypto, Python Network, and Certus One, plus many. They built out Wormhole yesterday, probably without flinching because it's a multi billion dollar company, huh? Hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. I did not know that whatsoever. I did not know that whatsoever at all. Huh, I guess we learned something new today as well. I didn't think that the, the story would go like this. Very interesting. Very interesting. This is a different story altogether, I believe. Uh, this is. I think this is a story about being able to pause ETH. I'm not sure. Let's, let's skip that for right now. All right, so uh, once more, a little bit confusing. I didn't expect the story to go so deep, and so I didn't expect that we'd get into that one. Then again, uh, Jake came in with a very interesting statement about scams. Most crypto policy issues are complicated by how fast the tech is growing and changing. 
It's hard to craft specific solutions with any confidence. They'll make sense in a few years. The best thing regulators can do now is go after the actual bad actors, the frauds and scams. The amazing thing about crypto, unlike the traditional financial system, is the fraud and scams are transparent and observable by everyone. We see them happening in real time within hours the crypto community does investigations that would take law enforcement years for free. Nobody hates crypto scammers more than us, the crypto community. Nobody who cares about this tech wants to see criminals use it to get away with defrauding victims. Yeah, and There's nothing we'd like more than for regulators to come in and protect investors by getting the bad guys. I wish more resources went to this. Because one thing you got to remember is the SEC, for example, and authorities like that, they're coming in to protect investors, right? But at this point, they're not really helping investors be protected. They're, they're doing it from a really crazy standpoint, which is, oh, we're going to make sure that these USDT things are properly backed. There's no fraud happening there, those stable coins. And, oh, we're going to look after a couple of multi-billion dollar companies out there already that are looking to do legitimate business instead of looking at the actual literal scams that are going around that are literally stealing people's money every single day that everybody agrees upon. No, they're going to wait for those ones. Oh, better wait. Uh, you know, they're, they're stealing people's money. Let's wait until it's actually gone forever and then we're starting to do something about it. Let's wait until it happens. Okay, we're going to see it through the fingers for today and tomorrow we're going to look into it. That's kind of what they do, uh, which is confusing to me. But that's, again, a part of the, the ripple problem, I guess, that they're going after them when in reality, it's really not the best guys to pick a bone with if you if you think about it you know it's one of the ones that can literally back themselves up the most properly if the sec really wanted to win this case i would have thought that they would go after the smaller fish first to build up some case law and then be able to use that into this newer crypto xrp in that sense to kind of build up hey all these were securities look at the factors this one is one too but no they went for the big fish all of a sudden and they're looking to lose but that's again my opinion disney is hiring an nft expert to lead his efforts into the space you will help, this is the job posting, lead Disney's efforts into the NFT space, including monitoring the evolving marketplace, setting category strategy, and managing key partners. There are four jobs for that, which I think is rather interesting from Disney's side. I mean, it was kind of to be expected because Disney is doing it and all those guys are doing it, so who knows. Uh, Deloitte apparently said that 82% of Indians surveyed plan to invest in Bitcoin and crypto, and that could represent an additional 50% of the world's population investing into crypto. It's true. India is really heavy on the crypto side. I'm really excited to see that as well. When I check the comments section, there's not that many people from India. When I check my, like, my Discord and whatnot, there's usually quite a lot of people from India, which I think is pretty exciting. And then Moon Lambo shared this. I look forward to XRP hitting a new all-time high so that we can circulate a mashup video of these nonsense comments with charts showing XRP price or XRP and price discovery. Uh, here was a video. Let's quickly actually see if we can watch that real quick. Uh, so... These guys are also here over in Dubai. Met them both before. Very nice people, if you ask me. And never mind. I will not. Say, I wanted to say. No, you'll see in a couple of days. I'll show you. Bitcoin is going to ten million dollars per coin, and XRP is going to approximately zero. Oh no! Come on, really? <laughs> zero. No, there's got to be some value for XRP. Zero. <laughs> a whole zero? Whole approximate zero. Not even point zero 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 no. zero 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 one. If anything, it's gonna go below zero. <laughs> You're gonna have to pay <laughs> to get rid of your XRP. Yes. <laughs> well, you heard it here first. Get rid of your XRP now before you have to pay to get rid of Give it. Give me thumbs up. <laughs> Interesting. So I wanted to say when I talked to Da Vinci, he, he was on the same note, though. He did also tell me XRP is centralized piece of garbage. And we didn't really have a discussion on that point, because when I looked into his videos, he did for a couple of times say you don't hate it, don't date it, just trade it. And there is something to be said about that. You know, you don't necessarily have to like a crypto. You don't have to believe in that. And you might call these people misinformed. You might call them too basically overinformed. My conclusion is. People have different priorities and different things they want from these cryptos. And generally speaking here, I think this is mostly a joke, mostly a fun little video made for some specific reason. I don't really know what. But if you look at the reality of these things, even Da Vinci, I'm not sure about Moon himself, has said before that it might be a good buy. George from CryptoRS has said it might be a good buy. And every big Bitcoin-only person I've spoken to, or Bitcoin guy, so to speak, they've said XP is a good opportunity. Why? Well... Because literally, this lawsuit, you might even say they might lose, right? Which is possible. But if that's the case, 
then most likely quite a lot of other crypto will follow. But if they win, I don't think many people can deny that the probability of XP price doing amazing if they win is ridiculously high. And there's still a very high chance that they win. Even if you call those odds 50-50, again, let's say Ripple does win, the price goes up, most likely. If Ripple does lose, a lot of other cryptos will also perish. So it doesn't really matter which one you pick because a lot of cryptos will go. Yeah, but again, it doesn't really give a lot of context. We're not exactly sure why they think it's going to go to zero. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because one man's opinion doesn't really matter for our investment, if you ask me. But then again, at the end of the day, if you're influenced by, by opinions like this, maybe look at yourself because at the end of the day, as I said just now, it doesn't really matter. So, um, yeah, no reason to get angry, no reason to call them out or anything like that. Let people have an opinion, you know, so that's how these things go. Sometimes people disagree and I don't think you should. Uh, oh, there's another one here. Oh, well, uh. We'll cover, I want to see what Slavic said as well. We'll cover this a little bit later, as you guys have most likely seen from my Instagram or so. I've been with these guys quite a lot, with all these guys. So it's interesting to see what they say about this stuff. Very interesting. We'll, we'll cover this in a different video as I look further a little bit to find some, some more videos about this. I don't want to be the bad guy, though, to really clown on people. Uh, I just want to see what they say and give my own rational opinion about it. Rational opinion. Whatever. You guys will see. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I'll definitely see you guys again in another crypto video later today.